plans. Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're going to just talk through some tips and tricks and ideas for um, managing your website. Maybe you've been doing this for a little while and um, you want to just have some uh, better control over a few things on your website. Uh, so I'm just going to go through a couple of ideas. Yeah, take them, leave them. This is not, this is entirely optional and should just be something, some tools that um, will give you some more control over how your website works. The first thing I want to look at is a media library, and I'm using the WBLS website as a um, uh, poster child for media libraries that are, I've gotten out of control. Uh, this website is very well used with a lot of documentation, but one of the things that we end up with um, so many files, 6,403 files currently in our media library, and that is it, you can go through and you can manually weed, but when you get to up to those kinds of numbers, it really gets out of control. Um, something that you can use proactively that I've been testing out is a plugin called this Real Media Library plugin. There is a free version and there's a pro version. I'm currently just continuing to work with the um, real with the um, pro, with the free version. Um, maybe someday I'll want to go to pro if we really need it, but right now I just want to see what I can do. Um, what this does is, is it creates a, a layer on this uh, side of um, folders and you can create a folder just like um, your media files on or your um, file explorer on your Windows machine, you can create a bunch of folders and there are some search options. So right now I'm showing you all files. If I click on the unorganized files, so these are the ones that still need to be sorted in mine. Um, I have, and you can um, do some sorting and searching within yours if I want just documents and I want all dates, but I'm looking for, um, I think I just saw one like employment. So here's a, um, a bunch of employment applications. I have created a folder over here called job postings. I do a bulk select on um, anything that looks like it might be an appropriate form or an appropriate topic. And I'm gonna drop that into my job postings. And now I'm left with this unemployment PDF, which is actually under COVID-19 resources. I am not quite sure why, but I don't really want to download and look at it right now. So I'm just very quickly dragging and dropping and making these things um, disappear into some folders. And then I can go back later and do some better sorting. I'm hoping to find another plugin that will help us identify what things are actually being actively used on our website. But for right now, um, this is the best tool I can offer for at least gaining control over your media library. So when you upload an item, you can maybe tag it and drop it right into a folder right away for future sorting and searching. Again, that plugin is called Real Media Library. Uh, and you can get that by going um, to add new in the plugins and then searching for Real Media Library. And you see, I already have it installed and activated, but that's what the um, that's what the icon looks like. So that's what I've been playing with. Um, some other things that have come up over questions: um, setting the default category for posts. So when you create a new post on your website and you want it to go into a category. So, um, you may have um, a couple different options. It may automatically put it to a uh, home page or to another um, program or something. By it may be set that way already, but it may also just automatically go into uncategorized. If you know that almost every single post that you're going to make is going to go to your home page slider or something similar, we can go over here to. Um, settings. So you have your settings on the black on the left hand side of the screen. And there is um, a, a bunch of things. Again, when you come in here, it's kind of a nice way, place to poke around and look in here, check that your time zone is correct, that your week is correct. I'm actually going to go ahead and start our week on Sunday instead of Monday. Um, doesn't really matter, but that's up to you. 
But then um, I'm going to click on writing here. And our default post category on this website is indeed set to uncategorized. But if I know that on my website, I'm almost always going to want it on the home page or on the home page slider, you have to look at your categories and see what they're named. You can click, you can select a default category, and that way it will almost always go onto your slider and you don't have to think about it. Um, and if you didn't want it on your slider, if you didn't want a post appearing on your front page, you can uncheck it when you're making that post. So I'm not the one who always uses the website, so I'm not going to change it from uncategorized, but that is a quick tip for organize or for um, speeding up your post making process. The second thing, um, hopefully, I don't know if any of you guys, but I've seen a few websites with this where you get comments on posts. And the vast majority of the things that we get po um, comments are, are spam. I, in fact, have almost never seen a website because most people use other forms of communication. I have not seen a library website with post comments that are of much value. So to avoid getting a bunch of spam on your website, we can turn off commenting. And this is just something to check to see, maybe it's already been done, but it's a good thing to just double check on and make sure it's been done. For this one, we're going to go to settings and discussion. And here you're going to see a bunch of options for um, how people can be allowed to comment on posts on your website. Um, the main thing is to make sure that this allow people to submit comments on new posts is unchecked. This will not stop people from being able to, or machines or bots or whatever, from commenting on older posts. So you may need to come down and just set some more barriers. Comment author must fill out name and email. Automatically close comments on posts older than, and I went as far as saying one day. Um, comments must be manually approved, should probably be always checked because that way you'll see there'll be a, a big red number next to this comments and you'll have an idea of um, that somebody has commented and you need to review that. Um, it won't automatically appear. Um, and then you could, you could click a few other things in here just to see if there's anything. But for the most part, making sure that the allow people to submit comments on new posts is unchecked. And then to add automatically close comments on posts older than X number of days old, we'll make sure that um, you're not getting spam on your website. Something else that I have been asked a couple of times, um, oops, I'm actually gonna go to our post slider. So, if you are looking at a, um, at a blog post on your website, there is going to automatically have the author of that post and that's whoever is signed into your website. Um, again, let's, let's take a minute to go back to look at users. So when you have users on your website, you will see um, the username, but then you'll also have the full name of that person who is um, is posting on, on a default on your blog posts, you're going to have the name of the author, the person who made the post, the date, and then any categories that were, that the post was added to. So registration is open for trustee training week. Yay. Tell your trustees. Um, Jamie Magic posted this yesterday. And it's under the categories of continuing education and featured post slider. I've had a few libraries ask, can we take this off? Um, why do I, I don't necessarily want to have everybody know that some name or admin, or in my case, if, if I come in and make a post, it's going to appear as super admin, which just kind of looks funny. Um, so you can remove the, these, you can choose which things you want to have appear. Um, just my little plug is I usually really like to leave the date on that way. If somebody is looking for something on your website, they have an idea of whether, how old that information might be. Um, it's, it, it, they may look at that and see, oh, wait, that's an old post from 2021. I won't call the library and ask them about it. Um, so I do try to promote leaving the 
leaving the date on there, but you can remove these other things. So how do we do that? Um, there are a couple different ways because we are using Divi. Um, there, you can do some of this in WordPress under settings, but because we are using the Divi theme builder, that's a layer that overrides um, some of the WordPress settings or leaves it there. So we're actually going to come down here. I'm going to close, um, let me just click on dashboard to get us out of here. Uh, so you see this Divi down underneath, uh, underneath settings, there's going to be a Divi um, link, menu link. And we're going to come over here and we're going to click on theme options. And here under theme options, this is also something else It might be kind of, if you have time to poke around and see what this looks like in here. I don't recommend making many changes in here because there are things that will mess with your entire website. Um, so play carefully in here, look at what this is. Um, and this is why I'm gonna have a, a demonstration website too. Maybe someday we can come in and show um, when we get more advanced, what things happen when you change some of this. But what we will look at today is under layout. And here you have your single post layout, your single page layout, and your general settings and your post info section. Here you're going to have um, show comments on posts. I'm actually gonna disable that here. That's another layer. You shouldn't have commenting happening at all if you've turned off the um, comments as we just talked about a few minutes ago, but it's another layer of protection just to keep those from being able to show up. Thumbs is okay. Um, I, I can't remember exactly how thumbs work. It just is a reference, it's a tag back piece. But then you can choose, do you want to have the author in, and that's a, just a toggle on and off. I'm actually gonna turn off comments you can turn the author on and off, the categories on and off. Again, I like leaving the date on. That kind of gives you a better idea of how old the information or how fresh and new the information is. Um, the single page layout, in this case, we have the, uh, the thumbs is off and show comments and pages off. And then show the thumbs on index pages is fine. And again, post info section, you can turn on or off author date and categories and the comments already off. So you can save those changes. That's just something you can go in if you decide that that's taking up too much room or you just don't need to have um, it attributed to a particular author on your website. That's something that you can change. Or maybe you only use one category and you never use a category. Um, you don't use many categories at all and it's just not as important to you to have a category um, designation. Let's see, finally. I have one more tip um, that I did not include in the last time we talked about um, the Divi uh, uh, Builder with images. And this one is somebody um, asked me because I hadn't included it, how do you make an image so that when you click on it, it pops up big? It doesn't necessarily link anywhere, but if you have a small thumbnail of an image or something and you just want to be able to see it bigger, how do you make that happen? There's actually a really cool and easy feature I'm gonna go into enable visual builder and I'm gonna make this donate to your digital library pop up bigger so you can totally read it when you click on it. Right here, when I come into settings from, this is again, my image module setting. And I'm not, this one doesn't have a link attached to it. There's no image link URL, there's no target. It's not that it leads us to anywhere else, but there is this option for open in Lightbox. And I'm gonna say yes for this and click the save. Uh, tip and trick to save, you can either um, click down here, open up this purple menu and click save in the bottom right corner, or you can on your keyboard do control and hold down the control key and hold down the S key at the same time for a keyboard shortcut. And without clicking, that will automatically save it. So anywhere in your process, you don't have to come down and click on these things. You can just hit control S and that will save. Now I'm gonna exit this visual builder. And when I click on donate to your digital library, it now pops up nice and big. So I can read all of the comments and maybe even, or all of the text and maybe even read what's on the spine labels on those books. And then if I click again anywhere outside of it, it shrinks it back down. So 
just a fun tip, trick, something that a uh, feature for your website. If you don't necessarily need it to be opening up in a new page, you don't need to be have a JPEG and you don't need it to download a PDF. You just want people to be able to read things. Enabling the light box on the image module will let that pop out for you. And I'm gonna go in and disable that. So not necessarily something I need on the actual WVLS website. So eventually we'll make a demonstration website where we can play with all these things. So to disable, again, you go into your visual builder, click on link, and you're, then undo the open and light box. So to toggle off open and light box, hit save, and control S. Don't even have to open the purple menu. It will save that for me. And exit visual builder. One last thing, just in case you haven't been using it, I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and on posts. Um, so if you look on your posts list, uh, a reminder that as you scroll, as you mouse over the title of a post, you can click on the quick edit and this will give you access to the categories, the title, the slug, the date it was published. You can toggle your author. You can create a password protected post and you can come over here, change the status of your post. You can enable, if you have the um, Publish Press Future plugin, um, you can enable a, a uh, expiration date for your post. In fact, I'm going to do this because I think trustee training week is, I don't remember the exact dates, but I know it's August. So I'm just going to go ahead and put August 30th, just so that it does actually go away. And I'm going to hit update right here. I don't have to open the entire post, but then it will change the status of that, um, of that post to draft on August 30th, 2023. And that's what I have for you today. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. If not, I will stop the recording and we can, or if anybody has anything else, at least.